friends. Like, don't sit down. Don't stay sit, seated long. I gotta fix this. Mm. He left his servant there. Verse 3 of 1 Kings 19. Elijah not only left the well that belonged to Judah, that belonged to praise, and went into the wilderness. But before he stepped into the wilderness, he left his help there. He left people. Woe unto you. When you've excommunicated yourself people. I don't care who you are. You may think you can get along by yourself. I don't care how strong in faith you are. If anybody was strong in faith, Elijah was. Good Lord. Look at his neighbor said, you called down fire lady. Literally. Come on. I mean, this was a man of miracles. Crazy faith. And he's in a wilderness by himself, sucking, pouting prophet, thinking he's the only one ever went through anything. He's left his praise. He's left the way. But he left his help. He left the companion he had with him. He, he, he left. My God, whatever you do when you're going through hard times, don't leave the church. Don't leave your communication with the saints. Amen. Somebody shout, stay around. stay around. This is one of his thoughts. And that's what people do to suppress. They don't want to be around nobody. Amen. But then they'll complain if you get them to talk very long. They complain about being alone. <laughs> Makes you want to pull out a Fred Sanford. You big them. <laughs> You the one causing it. People trying to reach out to you. You want to answer your phone? You get out of bed to answer the door. But then when you do talk to somebody, don't nobody ever come see me. Hello. You ever just felt just so bad, just so terrible, and then you got around God's people in the house of the Lord? There have been times you almost didn't go to that service. But you can't do it anyhow. Right. And that was the one. Hey, somebody here tonight, you almost didn't come. But tonight, it's going to be that one. You will not leave the way you come in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me go on with this. Verse 4, but he went away a day's journey into the wilderness. He's up under a juniper tree. And he says, it's enough now, Lord, take away my life. He lay and slept under this juniper tree. That's another thing people that's depressed do. They oversleep. They sleep all the time. Amen. And I know I've been there. Amen. I've been there. Come on, somebody. We, well, that was the only relief you could get. Some people get dug up on drugs and whatever. Some people overeat to try to deal with it. Some people oversleep. It's the only way they can escape the reality of what they're going through. And here it is, Elijah, he's, he's sleeping. Now check this out. Then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Now you talking about angel food cake. The boy about to get it. I ain't talking about some TV show, but he's about to get the original touched by an angel. You'd have thought, man, if an angel touched him, son, he'd snap right out of it. But watch what happens. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking and a, uh, uh, and a coals and a cruise of water at his head. He did eat and drink and laid him down again. Hey! Hey, you pouting prophet! Did you not notice the big angel? How in the world can he just get up and eat the cake, drink the water, and roll right back up? Whoa! How did he miss that big angel? You ever wonder about some of these people in the Bible? Whoa. I do. Hey man, Gideon's had an angel talk to him and he's still talking about how he can't do nothing. Oh. You ever thought about that? I mean, these people seeing angels. The supernatural manifests in front of them and they're talking about, I can't do it, no, it ain't me, no. And hey man, he rolls over and goes back to sleep. Lord, have mercy. That blows my mind. 
Look at your neighbor and say, I believe if I saw an angel. I might snap out of this thing. You, you, you the thought. And an angel simply means messenger. What God was doing, He was sending a message with His messenger. Come on, somebody. To come against the messenger that was sent by Jezebel. The boy had a... He ain't fasting. No, he just feeling sorry for himself. But he does eat and he drinks, but he misses the angel. Lord have mercy. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time, touched him, and said, Arise and eat. Listen to what it says, because your journey is too great for me. The message of Jezebel that she sent, the demonic message, was tomorrow I'm going to destroy you. Your tomorrows are canceled. Your future is over with. David felt that way when Saul was after him in 1 Chronicles 27 and 1. He said, there's nothing better for me. David got to the point when Saul was pursuing him. He said, there's nothing better for me. Job felt like that in Job 17 and verses 11. He said, my purposes are broken off. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And the thoughts of my heart, I'll never see. In other words, he's talking about my dreams. I, everything I had about my destiny and the future that God put in me, I'll never see it. My best days, is what he was saying, are behind me. And that's what the message of the enemy was. I, there's nothing going to be no better for you. You might as well learn to live with it. You're going to die like this. It ain't going to ever get any better. Things ain't going to ever change. And when you listen to that stuff and you believe that stuff, you'll find yourself leaving a well of praise. Come on, somebody. You'll find yourself leaving the church. You'll leave God's people. You'll find yourself alone sleeping and sulking and pouting. Come on, somebody. But somehow, God comes to you with a messenger. And his message is, rise, get up and eat. Because your tomorrows are not finished. Your best days are not behind you. In me, they're great. Your journey is great. Look at your neighbor and say, You ain't seen the last of me. Somebody looks at your neighbor and say, Don't y'all feel that? Tell them, say, Don't you feel that? Now look back at him and say, It's called a comeback. Don't you feel it? Somebody's, somebody's coming back. Somebody's coming back to faith. Somebody's coming back to life. Somebody's coming back to joy. Coming back to peace. Look at your neighbor and say, Excuse me while I'm coming back. Hey, hallelujah! My journey is great! Look at your neighbor and say, If you see me wearing shades at church, tell them, say, If you see me wearing shades at church, if you don't know what that is, that's sunglasses, tell them, say, It's because my future is so bright in Jesus. Look at him and say, my future is so bright you may see me even see me wear a bag over my head like Moses did because some of you won't be able to look at me. Come on, somebody. Because of the globe. Somebody shout the globe coming from my countenance. Somebody shout when you know you got to go. Come on, somebody. It'll give you a glow. Hallelujah. But if you think that this is it, it ain't nothing going to ever be better for you. You ain't going to never be delivered. You ain't going to never be free. Things ain't going to never change. You won't never be healed. You'll sit around, suck your thumb, feel sorry for yourself. But I've come tonight not as an angel because I sure ain't no angel. My 